Hi everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop and welcome to part two of my video series on how I'm building a dovetailed tea chest. In the last video we talked about the design of the tea chest and in this video I'm going to take you through how I built the case of the tea chest. Uh, one design note that's changed from the last video is that we found out that the tea packets that my friend was going to put in the box are actually, well they, the label is printed this way. So uh, it was a pretty easy change to make. I just rotated the whole design 90 degrees so the box is now wider than it was before and it's less deep than it was before. So let's get started and I'll show you how I built the case. I start by laying out my case parts onto my stock. This allows me to select the best arrangement of the grain across the finished box. I'll measure and roughly mark out the lengths of each piece and then I'll mark where I'll cross cut the board. I'll then use my jigsaw to rough cut the board to length. You'll see here I left myself a little bit of extra room uh, just in case. First stop is the joiner. You'll see this board has a slight cup to it. So I'll use the jointer to remove that cup and get the board completely flat. And then I'll edge joint the board as well. I also take this time to mill up some of the secondary stock for the uh, internal components. This is a scrap piece of maple. And then it's off to the planer to plane down the opposite face. I'll also take this time to resaw the maple down for the interior parts. I'll set my fence to 7 sixteenths of an inch and resaw the board in half. I'll then set all my boards aside to rest for a few days before coming back and milling them again. My case pieces at this point are about uh, 7 eighths to an inch thick. After a few days of resting, you can see that the case size moved a little bit. So we'll go ahead and mill it all again. I'll run the board over the jointer to establish a flat reference face again, and then plane the board down through the planer. I also start planing down my back. I skipped uh, the back until now because it was already at three quarters of an inch thick. After the second milling, I let the pieces sit again for a few days, and then I milled them down to a final thickness of a half inch. Uh, here you'll see me laying out the pieces onto the stock. I have the back, and then the piece that's going to have the front and the two side pieces. Here I'm laying out the front and side pieces. I'm trying to figure out where I want the, um, the cuts to be so I have a nice grain pattern around the whole box. And I seem to have found something I like. So I'll mark those, mark where the cuts are going to be, and then I'll also mark the back as well. I'll shift that around to make sure I have the grain uh, right where I want it to be. Now over at the table saw, I'll square up one edge for each of the pieces. And then I'll set up a stop block to start cutting to length the back and the front. I'll reposition my stop block so I can cut my two sides. First, I'll set up the table saw to remove the pieces for the lid. These are just one inch strips off the top of the boards. And then I'll set the fence again to cut the width for the case. I'll cut the case width on the back and sides, but not the front. Since the front case is going to be a little different, I'll set the fence for two inches and cut a strip off the top of that one. And that will be the top of the front. Now getting started on the joinery, I'll go ahead and use my marking gauge to scrap a line all the way around the two ends of the back piece and then start laying out my dovetails. I'm not being too precise with the layout of the dovetails since I'll be cutting these on my bandsaw so they're going to be symmetrical either way. I'll make a quick mark on the corner which is going to be mitered so I know not to cut that corner um, when I'm doing my bandsaw cuts. At the bandsaw, I'll use a wedge that is the same angle as my dovetail and run the board through the blade. 
That'll give me a nice angled cut. For the opposite cut, I flip the board over and run it through the blade. When I get to the other side of the tail, I align the blade with the existing kerf, but I am very careful not to clip the corner of the existing tail. After making the cuts in the bandsaw, I head back to the bench to clean up the piece. I start by cutting off the half pin on the end and cleaning up the shoulder with chisels. You can see I gradually work back to my scribe line before setting my chisel in that line and chopping down. The other thing I'll do is pare down the edges instead of chopping in from the face. I find this to be a lot easier and you don't have to worry about uh, the material blowing up beneath it. It just takes a steady hand and a sharp chisel and you can follow that scribe line right down the face. Chopping time! I'll first work my way down the board removing most of the waste and then come back and clean up right to the scribe line. Once I get the majority of the waste removed, I'll come in with my chisel and chop down right on my baseline. I'll then clean up the bottom corners of the dovetail. For this I'm using a round back chisel from Ashley Isles. I find this chisel's thinness to be really helpful here because you can fit the chisel in between the tails. Um, a normal chisel wouldn't fit in there because they're so close, uh, but this chisel has no problem getting in there and cleaning up those corners. Those corners are left over from the bandsaw. I, I try not to go all the way down to the baseline at the bandsaw in case I accidentally go past the baseline. Time to flip the board over and chop in from the other side. I'll clean up the other face exactly the same way and then we'll move on to cutting the miter. Cutting the miter is pretty straightforward. It starts with a 45 degree layout line. What you're trying to do here is connect a 45 degree line right from your baseline. And I do that with a marking knife. I'll also go ahead and mark the waist so I don't screw this up and cut the wrong side of the line. Since I'll be sawing from the inside face of the board, I need to transfer my layout line to the inside, and I do that with my marking knife. Now I'll go ahead and start sawing out the miter. The most important thing here is to keep your saw square to the piece. You don't want the saw to wander along the end grain, uh, because that will be very obvious in your final piece. The inside cut is not as important since your pin will be uh, laid out exactly to this. And another tip, make sure you stop before you get to the corner. You absolutely do not want to cut through that corner because that will be very obvious in the final piece. Here you can see what it'll look like after it's cut, and then we'll go ahead and make the second cut to actually remove the rest of the waste. This cut is along that 45 degree scribe line. As I almost always do, I'm leaving some material behind to clean up later. I'm not sawing right to my line at this point. Then a little clean up with a chisel, just to clean up that bottom area, and then we'll start chopping down from our scribe line. On this side of the joint, I'm not going right to my baseline at this time. I'm going to leave a little bit of material there until I get the corresponding miter cut. This will give me a little material if I need it to adjust the fit because you want these to close as tightly as possible. Now I'll start transferring the layout from the tailboard onto my pin board. I just line it up with the face and on the end with my knife there and I'll go ahead and scribe those lines. Really the trickiest part here 
is going to be scribing along that mitered tail. Uh, it's a little tight in there, so you might have to adjust your knife around a little bit just to get your mark in there. Now I'll just transfer my layout to the face so I have a reference for when I'm sawing. I'll start cutting the pins by working all the way down in one direction and then coming back and sawing the opposite direction pins. Once I've sawed out all of the pins, I'll remove the waste with the coping saw. Now back to chopping. Just like I did on the tailboard, I'll start chopping away from my line and then gradually work back towards it. Eventually I'll drop my chisel right in that line and chop straight down. Once I finish chopping up the waste from that side, I'll go ahead and flip the piece over and begin chopping in from the other side. Again, I'll start chopping away from my line and gradually work back towards it. Now once I'm done chopping all the waste out, I can go ahead and start uh, refining down the size of the pins. You'll see here I like to pair across the grain following both of my scribe lines to get the pin down to its appropriate size. I find this way works really well and gives me great results. I usually have my joints fit in the first try this way. This just requires a fairly steady hand. You don't want to dig into the, the keep side of the scribe line at all. So I'm always sort of angling my force away from the pin. That way if it gets out of hand, the chisel just slides out into the waist a little further. Next I'll lay out for the miter. Again, I'll connect that scribe line with the 45 degree line. And then I'll saw along that line. Now I'll pare down along that miter, working back to my scribe line. This goes fairly quickly with a sharp chisel. So once I had that first joint cut and I have it fitting together nicely and I have those miters closing nice and tightly, I'll go ahead and cut the joinery on all three other sides. Uh, one little difference that you might think is a little odd or might seem like it's a little more challenging is the front because it's only two inches wide. But in reality it's cut exactly the same way as the other pieces and really no different. It just doesn't extend as far into the sides as the back does which extends the full length. So that's all for part two. Please take a look at part three where I'll go into more detail on the miter dovetail since the, the lid of the box has actually eight of them because the top and bottom of the joint are both mitered. So I'll talk a little bit more about um, getting those to fit nicely in that video and I'll also show you how I built the drawers and all the finishing touches. So thanks for watching. As always, if you guys have any questions or comments about anything I talked about in this video or anything here in my shop, please leave me a comment. I always appreciate those. And until next time, happy woodworking.